and activities and in the classroom. He modifies activities and assignments to meet individual needs so his students can all participate and learn, including his nonverbal uh, non autistic students. His colleagues say that Rich is everywhere. He works with all of them in a positive manner. If he cannot solve a problem, he'll find somebody in the school or community who can. Coach Carpenter will literally run side by side with you, work with you, and do whatever it takes to help you achieve. He is a humble teacher that will give you his last dollar. Well, this is good to know. He's a, <laughs> he is a humble teacher that will give you his last dollar if needed. Anybody need money? We got <laughs> Mr. Carpenter is a giving soul uh, uh, and who genuinely cares about his students and colleagues. Coach Carpenter is the type of person who, who we, we all gravitate towards. His positive attitude is infectious, and his smile lights up, lights up any room he enters. Congratulations. <laughs> Amy Cutshill, is she here? I don't think she's here. I think she lost her grandfather, right? So I think she's, so certainly condolences to her. But we're going to read this so that she can have it. All right. So Amy teaches her students at Bradley. They are all artistic. She is a true advocate for students regardless of their innate artistic abilities or personal interest in art. A parent writes that Ms. Cutsale's love of art and her students go beyond the school walls. She shares with students and parents the opportunities to participate in local art contests, camps, and events. Ms. Cutsale inspires her students to develop their own individual style without a push towards artistic perfection. Her gifted art students work with her on various events and projects, and she does adaptive art projects for those who are not physically able to work with some of the art tools. Amy involves the entire school community in arts. Her principal describes Amy as a marigold. Marigold borders protect the other plants from harmful bugs and weeds. They bring out the best in other plants. Ms. Cutsell brings out the best in those around her. She is a ray of sunshine, positivity, and kindness. Her smile reflects the joy she has found in the work she has chosen to pursue, and she makes Bradley a better place. Congratulations, Amy. Uh, one of the bylaws for the foundation board is if you're not here to get the $500 check, then, then I get that. No, I, so I, I we, just, we just wrote that in. <laughs> just starting the first half of her career with Falker County Schools, v Vicki Estep. Come on down, Vicki. <laughs> Vicki Estep is a caring librarian who works extremely hard to foster a love of reading among the students at Grace Miller Elementary School. She is, she is a true veteran of FCPS with 40 years of experience here. Vicki works with the Battle of the Books program and initiated the Big Bounce Reading Rewards. On the day of the Big Bounce, the gym is filled with bounces and exciting activities for children. Her colleagues write that when Vicki reads to students, she ushers them into different worlds, different moments in history, and forward into the future. She truly helps her students understand the beauty of reading, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. Students' faces light up when they see Mrs. Estep because they know she cares about each student and their family. Mrs. Estep opens the library during the summer, allowing students and parents to come in and check out books. This helps foster reading between home and school. Vicki has impacted the lives of countless students by making the magic of reading and literature attainable and exciting. Thank you and congratulations. Tammy Hagen. Hey. Tammy is a veteran science teacher who brought her vast experience to Kettle Run High School in 2008. Feel welcome and heard. A former student writes that she struggled with testing throughout her school years. Mrs. Hagen taught her a variety of test-taking skills which helped her pass her earth science SOL. The former student adds that both she and Mrs. Hagen were so excited when she passed because it was a huge accomplishment for her. Her assistant principal writes that Mrs. Hagen is a learning coach and an asset to the school community. She focuses on the whole student as it relates to their emotional well-being and academic success. Mrs. Hagen is the epiphany of what I would want in a teacher as a student, parent, and administrator. Congratulations, Tammy.
Bobby Lynn Hauser. Bobby Lynn Hauser is, is the type of teacher every administrator dreams of having on staff, according to her assistant principal, Mrs. Shorb, at Cedar Lee Middle School. The eighth grade science teacher is not only a team leader, but the GEMS club sponsor, the instructional coach and mentor to her, and an instructional coach and mentor to her colleagues. She is dedicated and passionate about student success. Ms. Hauser sets high expectations for her students to reach while providing a comfortable, safe, and consistent environment to learn in. Her colleagues are inspired by her creativity and energy. She is one of the first to arrive in the morning and one of the last to leave in the afternoon. Ms. Hauser's students adore her, stating, Ms. Hauser is really nice and her room is so colorful and fun. She is always so helpful. Xander shares that Mrs. Hauser's class is a place where I feel respected and I feel like I belong. That's an outstanding quote right there. Her assistant principal adds that she is honored to nominate this amazing teacher. Congratulations. <laughs> Quentin Jones. <laughs> Mr. Jones is described by his colleague, Ms. Monsoor, as a one-of-a-kind guy who is beloved by his students. He is the light of special ed department at Fauquier High School, and his colleagues admire him, not just for his supreme dedication to teaching, but for his selfless nature, tireless work ethic, and an infectious sense of humor. As a teacher, he makes all students feel unique and special. While Quentin is dedicated to teaching content, he can always interject enough humor and encouragement to keep the students hooked. Coach Jones is legendary as a track coach with winning seasons and individuals who advance to state competition. His track team students understand that he expects a code of moral behavior and full commitment to do their best. He is such a wonderful role model, his students want to emulate him. Quentin has sponsored the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, welcoming all students regardless of faith. Each week I see Quentin surrounded by these students in the cafeteria having breakfast. He is such an inspiration to so many. Teacher and Coach Jones care for his students in and out of the classroom and never gives up on any of them. Congratulations. Well, that was really nice. I asked Quentin if he wrote that. That was really, really, really oh, nice. That's a great fashion sense. Great fashion sense as well. <laughs> Carrie Linebaugh is not just a special edu education math teacher at Liberty High School. With another teacher, she leads the new teacher mentor program and gladly accepted the opportunity to be the first to teach the Teachers for Tomorrow course. Her principal, Mr. Cox, writes that Ms. Li Mrs. Linebaugh is a teacher who empowers students to explore their interests and enthusiastically inspires them to take risks. He adds that Mrs. Linebaugh and her co-teacher were chosen as role models for the Virginia Co-Teaching Initiative. A colleague writes that Carrie has found methods to reach students for whom learning is the toughest thing they have to do. When she is instructing, students are working, collaborating, learning, and having fun. Carrie has earned the highest respect of both students and colleagues, all while raising a beautiful family. Another colleague writes that Carrie responds to her questions with better, que with better questions that help her grow as a teacher. She is a great example to students and teachers alike. Congratulations. Thank you. There we go. That was nice. Andrea Martins inspires her ESL students to put forth their best effort because they know she believes in them. Not only does Ms. Martin serve as a role model for the staff members at Pearson, she is someone who every child adores and admires. Andrew uh, views all of the students at Pearson as her students, even if she does not work directly with them. She makes it a point to learn the names of students so she can greet them with a warm smile, kind word, hug, or high five when she sees them about the building. Ms. Martins connects with students by visiting classrooms during her planning period, eating lunch with them in order to provide company, and companionship to those who may be in need of some extra attention and providing free after school tutoring. Whether it is a snack, school supplies, clothing, or an ear to bend that students are looking for, our students always know that Ms. Martins is there to help them and that she will not let them down. Ms. Martins is the epitome of a superb educator who is always willing to go above and beyond for her students. Congratulations. It's getting complicated. We're starting the second row. All right. Sean.
Alan Morton greets, greets, greets everyone with a smile that makes her approachable to children and adults alike. <laughs> Parents and colleagues agree that the fifth grade, that this fifth grade Coleman teacher has a way of lifting you up and making you feel confident in your ability. Sean is a powerful advocate for students and education. Does a colleague need a new plan? She will help you formulate one. Looking for an enrichment program? She will start and sponsor one. For students, she is the same. Find out a student has an impressive career goal. Mrs. Morton brings, a, brings in a real-world professional to speak to her class and answer questions. Her parent communication is outstanding, and colleagues are overjoyed when she is their child's teacher. Her team uses Class Jojo, Dojo as an app to keep parents in the loop. Mrs. Morton's students believe she should be Teacher of the Year because, quote, she is forgiving, she is kind and generous, she is fun and fun-loving, and she hardly ever, ever loses her patience. Congratulations. <laughs> hardly ever. <clears throat> All right. Kelly Mulliken. <clears throat> Is a rare combination of kindness, patience, attentiveness, and intelligence according to a volunteer parent of one of her students. Her principal agrees, writing that Mrs. Mulliken is an outstanding teacher and collaborator and provides a sense of belonging for the children at Smith Elementary. As a first grade, as a first grade teacher and part of the PBIS team, Kelly has worked to make Smith a community, a place where students are valued and respected. With a caring and trusting nature, Kelly makes sure students have a voice in the decisions about their learning experiences by providing them various options. A colleague, a colleague writes that she first worked with Kelly when she taught kindergarten where her, class, where her classroom was engaging, cheerful and inviting to curious five-year-olds. She demonstrated her versatility as an educator as she made the transition from teaching kindergarten to first grade seamlessly. She adds that Kelly Mulliken leads us all to be better by her example. Congratulations. Jennifer Piercy, better known as Madame Piercy, to her French students at Warrington Middle School. Her principal and vice principal firmly believe that if you were able to make a meaningful connection with students, you're able to teach them just about any content. Madame Piercy has a quick smile and an easygoing manner that puts kids at ease and ready to learn. Her classroom environment is loud, with lots of laughing and dancing and singing. All right. <laughs> Both singing and dancing tend to be outside of most people's comfort zone, and that is actually a great way to learn new topics like French. Madame Piercy's annual Quebec trip, or is it Quebec? Quebec. Quebec. <laughs> Quebec trip also provides unparalleled insights into her leadership abilities outside of the classroom. This is a once-in-a-lifetime experience for eighth graders. She, ins she ensures that they are exposed to the culture by having them participate in activities and meals that are not traditional, well, that are traditional, excuse me, all while building relationships with each other. Madame Piercy gives her students memoir, memories that will always cherish, that they will always cherish. Congratulations. <laughs> that Caitlin Reeder volunteers her time to lead two different fresh clubs, a fitness club and Greville's first ever cooking club. She devotes countless hours to organizing with the ultimate goal in mind of students learning and having fun. Mrs. Reeder's kindergarten class is full of activities and interaction. She possesses the ability to make learning fun, allowing kids to explore the assignments while still ensuring they know the boundaries of acceptable behavior. She is always ready to help colleagues and gives her time to make sure those around her are successful. Caitlin serves as team leader and has planned and helped organize numerous readathon fundraisers and school-wide events. A colleague writes that Greenville greatly benefits from Caitlin's service and love of our school and community. She is an incredible teacher and mom, super kind, generous, and caring individual. Congratulations. Barbara w Russell, please come on down. There she is. Barbara Russell's professional character is described as stellar in education, 
background and experience for multiple disability categories. But Barbara does not focus on the disability. She focuses on the child, seeking to help them reach their fullest potential. Mrs. Russell's com compassion, praise, and encouragement make children feel, make children who are at first feel overwhelmed, sad and afraid, eager to learn and to achieve. She recognizes the need of each of her students and they soon have confidence in their ability to understand new concepts and learn new skills. A colleague and parent of a student, Mrs. Russell Tott writes, the truly effective and inspiring learn leaders are not driven to lead people, they are, live they are driven to serve them. That's an out another outstanding quote. Barbara is driven to serve others both on personal and professional levels. Another coworker and parent writes that everyone who encounters Barbara are uplifted by her positive presence, and she is not only an outstanding educator, but an amazing human being. Congratulations. Wow, that's very nice. Wow, that's very nice. Leah Utz. Leah has an immeasurable passion for teaching, learning, and children, which shines in everything she does. She's a cheerleader and champion for her students, helping them to become more confident academically, socially, and emotionally each day. Whether it is showing up at one of her students' soccer games or teaching them a new math strategy, students know she is in their corner. In addition to her classroom, after school, and summer camp intervention work, Leah produces two musicals a year at Claude Thompson. Many students who struggle with finding success in school find success after school as part of the musical's cast. Her students write, Ms. Utz, you teach us in, a, in such a fun way. We will never forget you and you when we go to middle school. And Ms. Utz is amazing because she wakes up. She wakes everyone up in the morning and is always in a good mood. <laughs> and finally, Ms. Utz is the reason I have a smile on my face every day and I have good grades. She is my hero. Congratulations. <laughs> We are raising the bar this year with these, uh, <laughs> these paragraphs. These are amazing. Wow. Elizabeth Wines. <laughs> Elizabeth, Elizabeth Wines' entire professional career is dedicated to Fauquier County. She's been teaching at Marshall Middle School since she graduated from Mary Washington in, oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I will let it go. Uh, she's been teaching here for 30 years, uh, but she started at Mary Washington when she was eight. Not a lot of people know that. Mrs. Wines is a leader in her first year ESOL colleague. Ms. Wines is a leader to her first year e ESOL colleague who comes into classrooms two to three times per week to learn. Elizabeth collabs collaborates with other English teachers and her leadership on the team is invaluable. Elizabeth, Elizabeth plays a key role in connecting Marshall Middle School to the Marshall community. She demonstrates and practices, practices the value of sharing our stories, actively and respectfully listening to each other, and building skills of empathy. Mrs. Wines, Wines knows her subject matter of English inside and out. She shares this passion for, her, for learning with her students, and her, and her teaching is clear and concise. She checks for understanding and often shares personal examples, encouraging students to do the same. She connects the curriculum to the real world. The questions, the questions, what am I learning, why am I learning it, and how do I know I'm being successful are posted on her board and are often discussed in her classroom. Congratulations. <laughs> Christina Yaki. <laughs> Ms. Yaki is a reading specialist at Mary Walter. She has a wealth of knowledge and gives her students hands-on strategies to use when reading and writing. Christina shares strategies with parents as well and invites them to school community reading events such as book bingo and build a story time workshop. Chrissy helps all of her students not only learn the skills they need to become a better reader but also how to truly love reading. She enrolled in courses specifically to be better, to better understand and help children with dyslexia. Christina organized the Flash Club event, which was attended by hundreds of people and provided various activities for students and families to come together, learn, and share with one another. Her principal shares that Mrs. Yonke possesses and implements an extraordinary love of children 
an exceptional depth of understanding in her craft and the self-motivation to help students learn beyond their perceived potential. Congratulations. Kaylee Yost. Kaylee Yost teaches her third graders at Pierce to be thoughtful, creative, and confident problem solvers. A parent writes that her son has benefited from Mrs. Yost's infectious enthusiasm for education. She is a strong advocate for student success, and her classroom ex exudes the effort she has put into it to ensure her students feel comfortable and loved. Mrs. Yost's students love her for many reasons. She lets them conduct fun experiments. She has great snacks and always lets them choose the kind of <laughs> chips they want. But the, reason that has, but the reason that was foremost in their letter for her was she's always, she always gives them a second chance. Amen to that. Outside of the classroom, Kaylee maintains excellent communication with parents of her students. She values the homeschool partnership and works hard to build those relationships. Kaylee takes advantage of professional learning opportunities and provides support for her colleagues. Her principal adds that she knew from the very first time she observed her classroom that Kaylee Yost had a gift for teaching and any principal will be lucky to have her in their school. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> wow, that was really nice. Congratulations. A picture? A good picture. Okay, nice. take your time. Squeeze. There we go. up Sam <laughs> all right congratulations congratulations 2020 teacher of the year was truly extraordinary. <laughs> we'll take a little breather while people uh, can exit if they so wish to. Or you can be entertained by a school board meeting. <laughs> you bet.
Please and so forth. The school board work session is on March the 23rd at the school board office. The personnel committee meeting is on March the 12th at 8 a.m. at the school board office. The building committee meeting is on March the 23rd at 8.30 a.m. It too is at the school board office. The finance committee will meet March the 23rd at 4 p.m. at the school board office. And the Mountain Vista Governor School uh, Governing Board is on for March the 19th at 8 o'clock at the Warren County School Board offices in Front Royal. The School Support Council will meet on March the 24th at 6 p.m. right here at Fork Hill High School. And the Fork Hill Excellence in Education Foundation meeting is on April the 2nd at 4.30 p.m. at the school board office. And I guess we should add the joint oh, meeting. Yes, we have a joint meeting with the Board of Supervisors <coughs> this Thursday. The 19th. I'm, I'm sorry, the 19th, Thursday the 19th. And that is at 4.30 p.m., I believe. Right here at Falkir. Right here at Falkir. Yes. Okay. Did I leave anything out? No, We're good? I think so. Okay. Uh, Are you ready for me? Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I was going to say human resources report, but you go. Here we go. <laughs> Good evening, uh, members of the school board. Dr. Jack, I have the um, February information for the human resources uh, report. We currently have uh, still vacant 19 certified um, Positions in 12 classified separations. We do have our upcoming annual job fair this Saturday at Liberty High School. And um, our application numbers are still, um, they're still increased for bus um, aides as well as teachers. They have dipped slightly from February last year to February this year, but we're still continuing to see a, a strong amount of applications for those positions. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. And don't forget the the uh, work fair for this yep. Saturday? Yeah. I didn't hear it. I was reading something else. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. We'll see you on Saturday at okay. Liberty High School. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. School board uh, reports, and uh, we'll start with you, Ms. Pauly. Right. Um, so... I don't want to, I want to say, I won't talk about everything that's happened this month, so I want to save some things for everybody else to have, to share, but I do touched on the opportunity to go um, to Liberty and to actually observe their Cybersecurity Academy and their CTE courses and programs. S -s I'm just an amazing thing that we're offering our students, and we're offering them at every high school, but the opportunity to go through and see the hands-on, what we're doing with our students and what we're offering our community, um, it, was, it was inspiring. And so uh, I was just honored to be able to be a part of that. I was also able to go to the instructional showcase to sit in on the student safety and threat assessment um, session that they had. and. Uh, just learn some amazing things. Um, I know that what we ask of our teachers, what we ask of our administration is, um, we're, we're asking a lot of you, especially when it comes to threat assessments and the things that are happening every day in our students' lives, to be able to sit in there and to learn about uh, tools that we can recognize and to meet students where they're at, to prevent crisis, to, pre to prevent, um, just even something happening in our school. I thought the tools that, that were given in that assessment, I think after I was able to talk with the instructions, the instructors about opportunities that we could make it, the training more accessible and uh, being creative with getting this information out there. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to, to bring that information in a way, whether it's um, through online trainings or, what, or however we can do that to make sure that everyone has access to that information. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is was able to walk through downtown Warrington today and see the art displays and the, and the artwork in our community partner windows. 
such a great job. I mean, there were some, uh, there, there were pieces that we would go by and it, it, they looked like professional um, pieces in the windows and it was just, it was amazing. It's so great to have our community partner with us to showcase our students' work. They work hard all year long and uh, our teachers are, are amazing, our art teachers. And so it's an inspiration to be able to do that. So if you get a chance, make sure you walk downtown. And today was a perfect day for it, but I think we'll have other good days this week and this month. So also just thank you again for all of the warm welcoming into your schools and the gifts and the shirts and the mugs and email and um, it's just, uh, it's been an outpouring and um, I promise that I will work for it in the next, um, the next three and a half years, three and well, three fourths years. Uh, but I just wanna thank you all for just welcoming me in and um, just, uh, just all that you've done to support me in this new position. Thank That's you. all. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ms. Linda River, I'll come um, talk at the end, and I'll come right on back this way. I'm going to add on to the amazing um, CTE fair that we saw both um, at Liberty High School and then also here at Fauquier when they showed the eighth graders all the offerings. Um, I actually came with my son, and I was just blown away by... Um, what we're offering in our schools to every single kid to make sure that they have something that they can succeed in. Um, Mr. Cox, whenever they get that tractor running, I want to drive the tractor. <laughs> 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 um, I also had the opportunity to go to the Mary Walter Math Night. Um, when I first heard Math Night, I was like, mm, okay. It was a blast. If you have a chance to go to a math night at any of the schools, I would highly encourage it. I took my two middle schoolers who were not happy about it until they got there. And once they were there and they were um, playing with the kids, they, they had a blast too. Um, I just totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, I also had the opportunity to visit some of our elementary schools. Um, I love to see all the positive things that are going on, but I do understand that not everything is always going to be perfect. Um, please know that I'm here. I'm here to listen to you when you have problems. Please, please let me know those too, because we can't make your jobs easier if we don't know where the problems are. So please keep, keep those lines of communication open and um, keep doing the amazing things that you're doing. Thank you. Okay, and the reason that we were all at Liberty for this CTE showcase was that Ms. Amy Viana, Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary from the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Communications and Outreach, <laughs> visited Liberty. She, they heard her office, heard about the cybersecurity program did. and wanted to come and see it. So um, they came out of D.C. along with Michael Bowling, who is the Assistant Superintendent for Learning and Innovation at the Virginia Department of Education, and the out Outreach Coordinator for Congressman Whitman's office, Karen Klotz, also joined us. And the comments we got that day, along with the thank you that we got following that, just said they were so impressed with the variety of courses that we offered, but with their, the, the students and how knowledgeable they were, how welcoming, how polite, all of that. So congrats to Sarah Fry and to all of the CTE teachers out there, thank you so much for doing what you're doing. And then the kids were great at the um, CTE fair. It's to Taylor Middle School for um, welcoming us a couple of Fridays ago. I can't remember. <laughs> With, we, just got, we just got to sit and listen to some great entertainment and eat some good food. So what a night, and to get a sweatshirt. Yes. So it was a great morning. Thank you very much. Um, I did get by the instructional showcase uh, and sat in on the fresh team as they got a class of teachers up and sweating and moving and they were having a great time and stopped in another couple of other ones. So um, good job everybody on that. And last week, uh, Dr. Akers, Mr. Shrestha, and I got to go to Liberty and judge along with um, about 11 other people from the community, some of the FFA public speaking contests, and 
all we said was we were glad that we were sitting on this side of the table rather than out there because what they were doing was incredibly difficult and they did it with such poise and knowledge and hats off to everybody that's working with those kids in the FFA program. Building committee. Uh, we will hear some more from Mr. Edwards tonight about the sea power. Mm -hmm. Okay, and hopefully he can answer any more questions that anybody's got. The security vestibule that was supposed to have been done, the first one that was supposed to have been done last week is going to be done this week. There was a conflict scheduling, and it will be Thursday and Friday of this week on those half days. And when they get those vestibules done at the sister schools, they will get card readers also. You can shake your head when I do something wrong. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and we also did receive that state security grant for camera upgrades and hopefully then that will be done and card reader access hopefully at all of the rest of the schools will take place hopefully by the end of the summer the rest of middle schools rest There's of middle schools yes Auburn and Marshall get card readers. yes thank you and let's see oh and a thank you to local media because both local medias have kind of covered, picked up on the, the cars that are passing school buses and the stop arms. And thank you for highlighting that. I'll just give you an update. It, it hasn't slowed down. This was an update as of a couple of weeks ago. We now have 204 violations wow. for the year. And there's no road that's worse than another road. They, as, I, as I go through the list, there, it's just roads all over the county where folks are in such a hurry to pass a stop school bus. This past month, it's been especially alarming because they're passing the extended stop arms. Yeah. And the only thing that's saving the kids is that the, the kids have been taught and taught and taught by those bus drivers yep. to wait until they get that thumbs up and then come across. And the kids are watching for that thumbs up because in these instances, it might have been a different story. So please, I'm going to continue to ask, <coughs> please just slow down, leave five minutes earlier, whatever it takes. When you see that stop arm, stop. I think that's all. Well, the good, thing, the, the good thing about being last is I'm sitting here and I'm just scratching off everything that I was going to talk about, you know, so all, all that's good. But what I, what I did do that nobody else did, I went down to Liberty University down in Lynchburg and watched, watched the girls track team become runner-up state champions. Runner-up state champions, folks. Uh, Coach Quentin Jones and his staff do a tremendous job uh, in working with these ladies and conditioning these ladies. Uh, it, it's, it, it, just, it was just so exciting. Who's on that team, Duke? Well, of course, my little granddaughter. Uh, <laughs> she, she comes from a track family. I ran track here at Parker High School, and all three of my sons ran track here uh, at Parker High School. So. She's, she's keeping the torch alive here, folks. She's doing great. Uh, I do have something else I want to, uh, to share with you, at least read out here. Uh, you know, folks, I care uh, about Farquhar County. And every day I meet others who care about our community as much as I do. And they often ask, what can I do to make a difference? This year, the answer is easy. You can make a difference by participating in the 2020 census. That's because the census informs how billions of dollars are allocated each year to schools, health clinics, affordable housing, and hundreds of other critical services and programs that make difference in the lives of others every single day. It only takes a few minutes, folks, but the impact will be felt for years. Folks, when you receive an invitation from the U.S. Uh, Census Bureau, and the mailings will start this week, 
March the 12th, I encourage you to complete the simple uh, questionnaire online, by phone, or by mail. The census only occurs once every 10 years. So don't miss out on your chance to make a difference. And it does make a difference. You're talking like billions of dollars that we have a chance to uh, participate in the, uh, uh, these programs, whether it be for the schools, the health clinics, the affordable housing. Keep it here, right here in Fauquier County. So I encourage you once again, folks, to make sure that you participate in that questionnaire. Okay? Now, having said that, the consent agenda is up. Well, and I will. That the school board <laughs> approved the minutes from the February 3rd, 2020 school board work session, the minutes from the February 10th, 2020 school board meeting, the minutes from the February 24th, 2020 school board work session, special meeting, and public hearing the monthly bills and payroll, and the personnel recommendations, which include the new and newly hired of one teacher, one instructional supervisor, one office associate, two food service associates, one school health nurse, one nutrition manager, four bus drivers, one budget and management analyst, and one office manager, the retirement of one librarian, two teachers, one instructional assistant, and one office manager, <coughs> the resignation of three teachers, one ITRT, one school health nurse, one school security officer, five custodians, one attendance officer, one lead cook, two bus drivers, and one instructional assistant, and the release of one bus driver. Second. Motion and second that we approve the consent agenda to include the school board minutes, monthly bills and payroll, the personnel recommendations that include the new and newly hired one teacher, one instructional supervisor, one office associate, two food service associates, one school health nurse, one nutrition manager, four bus drivers, one budget and manager, uh, management analyst, man analyst one, and one office manager. Uh, we have several that retired, one librarian, one instructional assistant, one office manager. Those who resigned, uh, there include three teachers, one I ITRT, one school health nurse, one school security officer, five custodians, one attendance officer, one lead cook, two bus drivers, one instructional assistant, and one released, which was a bus driver. Any discussion? There no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Very good. Youth art. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to slide something here. We, we have two folks, uh, new uh, uh, administrators and administrative staff to introduce. I'm going to start with, um, are there plenty of folks here from Brumfield? Okay. Okay, hold the rotten tomatoes, please. Uh, so uh, replacing Vicki Sent, an office manager uh, who works very closely with Dave Graham and handles things relative to transportation, nutrition, maintenance, et cetera is Dina Rose. Congratulations, Dina. Welcome. And uh, Brumfield's loss is most certainly our gain, so congratulations and welcome aboard. Happy to have you. I also want to introduce uh, Charlie King, who's right there. Uh, Charlie King will be replacing uh, Lindsey Bradley, an instructional supervisor who works primarily with uh, preschool, VPI grant, et cetera. So uh, Charlie has most recently been an assistant principal at Mary Walter, and prior to that, she was a teacher at uh, Pierce Elementary School. So congratulations, Charlie, and welcome aboard. OK. Uh, the youth, where am I? Youth Art Month endorsement. Uh, all right, here, here they come. The RTs. Bearing gifts. Wow. We do, as usual. <laughs> uh, good evening, members of the school board, Dr. Jack and LaDonna Gorham, and our uh, audience. 
I am Carla Kolb, art teacher at Taylor Middle School, and this month we are celebrating Youth Art Month, otherwise known as YAM in Fauquier County and around the nation. YAM is celebrated in Fauquier County by promoting the art programs in our schools with special projects and events through social media and art shows. This year we will be showcasing student art through our annual community art walk on Main Street on March 21st with a show and reception at Studio 19 Gallery and at our, and at our Fauquier Fine Arts Festival, which will take place this year at Liberty High School on March 27th and 28th. We hope you can join us at these events. Now I'd like to introduce uh, one of my students, McKenna Kupka, uh, president of the National Junior Art Honor Society at Taylor Middle School, who will say a few words. Good evening, school board members, Dr. Jack and Ms. Gorham. We would like to encourage continued commitment of the arts in Fauquier County by asking the school board to officially recognize and promote our arts program by signing our YAM endorsement. This endorsement states that our education is a viable academic endeavor that develops students' problem solving and critical thinking abilities, teaches sensitivity to, express, to expressive qualities, gives a deeper understanding of multicultural values and beliefs, reinforces what students learn in other subjects and interrelates student learning in all aspects of art. Now we would like to give each school board member an, an endorsement to sign. Thank you to our school board for supporting the arts in Fauquier County. Now to show our gratitude, we would like to present you with these bags of handmade artworks by Fauquier County art students, which include pins, magnets, coloring pages, and other goodies, as well as invitations to our upcoming student shows this month at Studio 19 in Liberty High School. We also have some extra gifts to pass out to our audience. Right. Thank you again. Thank you. I tell you what, gifts just keep on coming. Yep. <laughs> wow. Thank you, everyone, for supporting uh, the arts and fuck here. Are, are, are you going to read the resolution? Who's reading the resolution? I will read the resolution that we, we all just signed. That'd be great. Thank you. Whereas the mission of Fauquier County Public Schools is committed to developing creative, confident, and knowledgeable citizens who are globally competitive by cultivating the potential of each learner. Whereas the school board believes that each person is unique and is an invaluable interest worth, people who learn differently and inspiration and inf uh, affirmation foster achievement. And Whereas school board recognizes that factors including disability, wait a minute, I'm reading the wrong one, I think here. That's the wrong one. Yeah. Uh, I nope. think we'll get to that one in a minute. <laughs> I, got, I'm, I stopped and I think, wait a minute, that's not the right one. Okay, hold on. We didn't recognize that word again. No, I know. For about I, I got years. it, I got it here. <laughs> it says, whereas the art education is viable to academic endeavor and and contributes educational benefits to all elementary and secondary students, including the following. Art education develops students' creative problem solving and critical thinking abilities. Art education teaches sensibility to beauty, order, and other expressive qualities. Art education gives students a deeper understanding of multicultural values and beliefs. Art education reinforces and brings to life what students learn in other subjects. And art education interrelates 
student learning in art production, art history, art criticism, and, uh, and aesthetics. Whereas, let me move down, our national leaders have acknowledged the necessity of including arts experiences in all students' education, and whereas March is officially recognized as Youth Art Month. I endorse the observance of Youth Art Month and encourage the support of quality school art programs for children and youth. I got that one right. Yeah. <laughs> now I don't have to read the other one. There's just too many, too many pieces of paper sliding up here. Who's got the uh, special education grant? It's Randy. I think it's Randy. 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 Grant is coming on down. This is a presentation for the special education grant application. Good afternoon, members of the board, Dr. Jack. Uh, this is my annual uh, pilgrimage to you to ask for the um, 6B grant. That's flow through money from the federal government through the state for special education. Um, this year, it's about $2.3 million, as we expect, um, and about 90% of that goes towards salaries and benefits for special education teachers. It offsets some of the um, cost for special education. Any questions or comments for Mr. Copeland? No, we're good. Thank you. All right, well, you can read it if you want to. Okay, this is recognizing the month of March as Equity in Education Month. Whereas the mission of Fauquier County Public Schools is committed to developing creative, confident, and knowledgeable citizens who are globally competitive by cultivating the potential of each learner. And whereas the school board believes that each person is unique, has invaluable interest, worth, People learn differently, and inspiration and affirmation foster achievement, and whereas the school board recognizes that factors including disability, cultural differences, language barriers, and socioeconomic status, as well as inequities in the availability of resources can impact the successful education of a child, and whereas the school board believes various educational paths need to be considered for the success of every student, and whereas is the goal of the Fauquier County Public Schools to reach each child through the method best suited to overcome barriers and to provide equitable educational opportunities, allowing for student, well, for student growth for every child. And whereas it is important for families, students, teachers, and school administrators to be aware of diverse needs of learners and to encourage discussion of the challenges as a school community and whereas the VSB has established a task force on students and schools in challenging environments to make recommendations to stay at the forefront of discussions on equity in Virginia schools. Resolved by the Fauquier County School Board on this 10th day of February, this is when the resolution went in, that the school board proclaims the month of March 2020 as Equity in Education Month, with the intention that educational equity, best practices, and programming be discussed in communities and classrooms. <coughs> okay. Sea Power Energy Savings. Good evening, school board members and Dr. Jack. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about CPAR um, and then move to action for approval. Uh, CPAR came out to February 27th building committee meeting and presented to the building committee. <clears throat> it's a company that was, it won the award, state award, bid award, and can provide savings to Fauquier County based on our ESCO projects, uh, it's based on kilowatt savings, and they're proposing 
an estimate of $80,000 over the next four years based on our savings. So I'm asking to see if you guys have any questions that I can answer and then see if we can move to action for us to sign the contract. This is a <clears throat> contract that all we have to do is sign it. We are already eligible for $17,000 in savings this year. I don't have the number. That's correct. Me, Tom. That's correct. Um, 20. 32 next year and 21 the next, the following two years after that. Okay. This is all <clears throat> a result of the projects that we've already completed with the ESCO project. There's no downside to this it will not cost us a penny this is simply money that they're going to give us right because we did some energy saving we changed the light a lot of energy savings yes. right we qualified by doing the lighting the refrigeration hvac variable frequency drives the weatherproofing of our buildings um, so we qualify under all those categories that we did in our esco project it, it, it was a no-lose situation for us. It was something that we discussed um, uh, at length in the um, uh, building committee meeting. Uh, we had the representative from C-SPAN to come there and talk to us about it. So it's, it's a, uh, a no-lose no situation for us, folks. They have another program also that's load shed, like if we had brownouts and stuff like that. We're still looking into that. That's yep, also Steve, a possible anybody saving down the road um, where we would turn our AC units off run generators for a certain period of time. But we're looking into that to see um, the feasibilities of that and talk to other um, school districts that are a part of that to see if there's any problems that they've run into. Um, but they haven't had to use that um, emergency system in, but once in six years. So but we're not entering into that part of the contract right. with this. We're still looking into that, but there could be something else to come back. Right. Let's see. Any questions? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to be getting into the school board uh, work session budget update. Wait, I'm going to. Would you? I'm okay. going to handle that one. You're going to handle that one. All right. Let me get that up. So, uh, the um, the goal of the work of the excuse me the, of school board tonight is to hopefully approve the, the grand total budget amount of $155,839,160. Uh, but I wanted to provide a few updates relative to the proposed budget, the state budget, and then information from the county administrator relative to his recommendation to the BOS uh, as far as an, a, additional funding goes. Um, it looks like at the state level, there's going to be, based on the Senate and uh, House of Delegates budgets, an additional six to seven hundred thousand dollars that uh, will likely flow our way, uh, assuming there's a there's a compromise within the crossovers, which is typically what they do. Um, so that's good news. Uh, the county administrator, as you recall, we re uh, requested an additional three point eight million dollars. Uh, for fiscal 21, mm -hmm. the county administrator recommended uh, $2.8 million. Uh, so that's a shortfall of about a million dollars. Um, next, in terms of some minor adjustments within the budget, the proposed budget that you have, uh, the SOQ, as we predicted during the budget presentation in February, that, that SOQ recommendation um, that came from the governor's within the governor's budget was essentially rejected. So it may mean that we have to hire an additional counselor, uh, but that's that's not guaranteed. That there may may or may not be a requirement. As you recall, last time I think it was was two, correct? Okay, so now we're we're really at one, and maybe maybe not even that one. Uh, we also made an adjustment uh, relative to substitute teachers. Um, as you recall, in my proposed budget, we have five full-time um, substitute teachers included and recommended. Uh, we feel like that's going to take pressure off of principals uh, who are scrambling, especially in out outskirts of the county, who are scrambling to get subs at times. We, we feel that will help. Uh, we had a meeting with principals recently, and we talked at length. And then we had me meeting with principals and then with a, with a subcommittee of uh, principals and uh, instructional assistants, et cetera. And we talked about how we can 
better manage classroom coverage, how we can better um, uh, provide flexibility to principals. Uh, so we, what we're proposing now is $57,000, which would be $3,000 per school. So there are 19 schools will provide them sort of a stipend of 3000 bucks, and they can use that money to pay uh, teachers who cover classes, uh, instructional assistants potentially who cover, let's say, for an entire school day. It just will grant them more flexibility. We thought that was that was money better spent than the um, the hundred thousand dollars we had initially put in for um, to increase the substitute budget as a whole. So you scrapped the. We scrapped the hundred thousand. Okay. We've added fifty-seven, and that would be money that would be at the okay. discretion of the building principals to use as they see fit in terms of how best to cover. What we heard from principals is we need flexibility. Like we need flexibility. We need to be, make, make on-the-spot decisions as far as class coverages, and if we're going to be able to pay folks to provide those coverages, et cetera, et cetera. And this was this was Prashant's uh, brainchild. That, well, this this is an easy way to accomplish that: is give them that money, they can use it as they need, and if they don't use it, it would flow back to the county. So those are some minor adjustments, but of course the the big question at this point is. We've requested 3.8 additional million from the from the county. Uh, county administrators has recommended 2.8 million, um, and that's not as painful as would have been in previous years because, as I mentioned, we're going to be receiving some additional state money. Oh, and so that's kind of the nuts and bolts budget update. Uh, we presented these questions, and I guess uh, we probably need to make these available on the website, but. Um, you're welcome to have these if you want a copy. Um, we provided some questions just as sort of igniter questions uh, for tonight's meeting just to um, get folks thinking about, you know, big picture is the 155 million, but there's other questions, other things that we're, we're looking for guidance relative to. And um, so we provided five questions, which if it's okay, I'll read these. Absolutely, right. sir. So first question is this. Uh, this is for board members. Are you in agreement with the overall proposed budget request of $155,839,160, which includes a $3.8 million increase from the County Board of Supervisors? We're making an assumption there. That may not be there, but let's say that is there. Uh, two, are you supportive and or do you have recommendations related to the compensation model outlined in the proposed budget? Number three, are you supportive and or do you have recommendations related to the proposed new positions in the proposed budget? Four, are you supportive and or do you have recommendations related to the operational and non-salary related requests such as asset included in asset funds, maintenance, contractual services, buses, fuels, et cetera? And then last but not least, do you have any other concerns and our recommendations related to any other part of the proposed budget? So that, that's it for me. Hoping okay. for some a little direction or recommendations, anything you got for us. I will start with comments from Ms. Little. Okay. Um, so I can I can promise you that I went through this budget from cover to cover um, as... I can tell by the stickies. <laughs> <laughs> There's stickies all over this thing. And highlighting. <laughs> highlighting. Um, and so uh, the one area that I did see that I want to highlight because I think it's going to... Um, Raise pro it may raise flags in the community, and I want to have Dr. Jack explain why some of those are in there. But um, and I'm not questioning the job that anybody's doing, but there were a few areas where I saw some pretty big increases in administration, um, and that was concerning to me. Um, and Dr. Jack kind of put things into perspective with how compressed the salaries of a lot of our administrators were. Um, and I think that deserves to be heard because, I mean, we've got counties that are going 120% of market value right next door to us. So yeah. if we want to keep quality people in our schools, um, it's something that needs to be discussed. So sure. I don't, if you want to. Oh, sure. Be glad <laughs> to. Well, there's two things, really. One, you mentioned the big one, which is compression. And uh, we, we made a lot of progress last year in terms of dealing with teacher compression. And I think that the grand total was somewhere around six million dollars to deal with, with that with that issue, and we made a lot of progress, which was which was great news. Um, but last year, that was the primary objective, and this was sort of a strategy that was laid out 
that we would follow, that we had been following and we would continue to follow, which was deal with certain groups of employees from year to year. Uh, so last year, last year it was teachers, I think some assistant principals who were just wildly compressed. Uh, and I'm, I may be missing a group, I think a uh, school, new, uh, done. bus drivers, done. school bus drivers, nutrition this year. Right. Right. Nurses, right. And then nutrition. Nurses. That's again. Nutrition. Correct. Yeah. So looking at the data, which I, we, is on the website now, and I, we passed that, I think, the last work session, we still have groups of employees that are just terribly compressed, and that includes administrators, uh, many classified positions, et cetera, et cetera. So in order to deal with that, it does mean that there are some folks who will get significant pay increases that's classified and certified and administration. But that's in order to deal with the compression issue. And that was the direction given to us by the school board at the retreat. And, and granted, you, you all get a pass because you weren't really, you were just there, you weren't necessarily on the school board. But you, you get into these situations when, for example, some folks receive over the last decade or so, some folks receive a pay increase, a substantial pre increase, and, and others don't. And whether or not that's strategic or not, what ends up happening there is some make progress in terms of the market, and some fall further behind in the market. So if you don't address that aggressively, we'll be back here next year having the exact same conversation. How do we deal with this level of compression? So the, the goal as presented at the retreat was to get uh, some administrators or central office administration to 90% of market. And so that's what, we, that's what we've attempted to do. Uh, most everyone else is, is at the, well, some are 92, some are 95, some are 100 if you're talking about nurses, for example. I think teachers, we're talking 91 or 92 of market. Am I getting that right? Where's Prashant? Is that, is, what, what are we at with teachers as far as our goals? Is it 91 or 92? So if you implement the 3% that is currently in the proposed budget at a total of about $1.4 million, um, we would probably be somewhere in the 92 to 99 range. Right there. And so what that means is... You need to... Oh, yes, I can, I can, I can do okay. it. I got it. I just needed the 92 number. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, minimum 92 percent of market is where we would get teachers to with a three percent increase. Right. Some would be at up to upwards of 99 percent. Okay. So they they run the gamut. But that was we were but able that's to do last that. year's numbers. Correct. And we were able to do that because of the influx we provided last year into this right. year. Okay, but that was strategic. That was that was our goal, trying to do that, trying to make that happen. We have to be fair, as the, the school board has pointed out very correctly. We have to be, be fair to all groups of employees, and get them closer to market. That's extremely important. Uh, that's how you hang on to good people. And and to your point, Miss um, Miss Leader Reber, <laughs> I was wondering. Stop me, stop okay, me. stop me. Thank you. I was, <laughs> wasn't sure. Um, to your point. You know, um, the, the, the thing we've heard in, in past, and one of the reasons I've, I handed this out at the last work session was the number of administrators we have. And the fact of the matter is in our region or our market, we're at or near the bottom in terms of our ratios of administrators to students and administrators to teachers. We just are. That's factual. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and we have really good administrators just as we have outstanding teachers we have to compensate them fairly in order to keep them. It's important. Uh, so that's kind of a long-winded answer to your question, but if it, that is the goal as stated by the school board and we're trying our best within the proposed budget to meet that goal. May, may I co comment before? Dr. Chuck, I, I, I appreciate everything that you and your staff and everybody has done and uh, analyzing all of the numbers and, and the, dollar, the budget dollars and everything. Where I have indigestion is it only addresses 3%, up to, up to 3%. Like you indicated here earlier, Princeton County is going to be giving 5%. Loudoun County is committed to doing 120% of the market which is at least 5%. To me, it seems like every step we take forward, 
because of that moving, that moving target, we fall too back. That's why it's critical that we, uh, that, that the Board of Supervisors help us out there a little bit and getting more, get a little bit closer to that 3.8 that we initially um, uh, had, had requested. Uh, you know, and don't get me wrong, I, I certainly appreciate everything that they have done uh, to get us or committed to 2.8, but the 2.8 only scratches the surface of what we really, of what we really need. Um, and like I said, it's uh, the, the difference between that 3% and that 5%, and every time we turn, in, uh, we turn around, Loudoun County or Prince William County is building a school right next to uh, our line, and we, we lose teachers. Are we going to lose administrators next? Because, you know, I know that we have headhunters out there who are looking for um, folks like we have in our district. And that, that concerns me. That, that really concerns me. Take that speech next week to the Board of Supervisors. And, and, and I will, because I, I feel I'm very passionate about it because, you know, you and I have been on this board long enough to know what happens. We, we, we go one step forward and we fall two backwards and that, that target line just keeps moving. And I think this year uh, we are in a better position than we have been over the last few years and uh, getting uh, the funds that we need to really make something happen, to really make some inroads into this market study um, uh, uh, gap here. Yeah. And I will make that plea. Um, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just the truth. Okay, I'm off my horse. Okay. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm good. I don't, I'm good. I think um, one of the things that I just wanted to, to bring up in this discussion was it, it's almost the same situation that we were involved, that we dealt with when we were in the CIP project, um, yeah, the CIP meetings, where, you know, we're deciding and we're agreeing to something to send it along to the Board of Supervisors without that that initial face-to-face um, -face contact with the board-to-board -board, um, meeting where we can hash out some of these numbers. And so the only part that makes me uncomfortable with approving this budget is, like, I, I find this process a, l a little backwards, and I know that I said that when I met with you, Donna, is that this process is a little bit backwards to me that we're having these conversations before, the, you know, the big conversation is the one that we have to have with the Board of Supervisors. And so it's knowing that we're approving it and we're agreeing to this as a board as we move this forward and we send this on to the Board of Supervisors, but it is also knowing that once we have that meeting that we're gonna go back through and make the adjustments needed. And so um, that's the only thing that I've realized is uh, that uh, it's more the, the observation of this process and I do think that there's probably things that we can do going into next year that we can approve the the way we do this, and um, right now I'm just the observer, and I'm and I'm learning, and I'm going to all of these things, and I'm asking the questions. But sometimes I do feel like we have it a little bit backwards. Well, next year is the second year in the two-year budget, so it's easy. Well, next year. Then, in, then, in, then the year after that. But I just I think that it's remembering it's not us versus them that That's we're right. in this together. That they are the they are the um, taxing authority, and so they have to answer. To, they have to answer to their constituents in a different way than we do, that we're advocating for what we want, but at the same time, it's, they're, not our, they're, they're our partners, and so I don't want to throw them under the bus. I want to bring them along, and so um, sometimes I think like, it's better to have those conversations and have the agreement and then come back and us approve, you know, us approve something and send it forward, already knowing that they're behind it. So, um, and, you know, like I, I admit I'm new to the table, but I just think, like, in observing this, I really hope that we can make this a little bit more seamless um, and, and we can improve on the communication between us and the Board of Supervisors. As far as what you mentioned, Duke, with the with the teacher, the the uh, compensation model that has been uh, that has been brought forward, I agree also that the three percent isn't enough to keep us moving forward to our goals. I mean, we did this vast study, 
so that we would have um, an idea of where we wanted to go. And everyone has said, like, that line continues to move. But we need to make sure that we're moving towards that and not falling behind. And so, you know, I, I think that we really need to advocate um, so that we're able to offer our teachers a, as, as much uh, closing that compression gap as much as we're able to. Um, I, I don't want to move ahead in the other questions. I'll wait. No, that, that, okay. was, that, that was all great. Good. All right. Well, did we move on? Did you read all the questions? I did. Okay. So um, as far as the new, the new positions um, and going over them, I think we've talked about them. We've talked about the things that are mandated and the things that we really feel that we um, need to add in uh, to assist our different schools. I, the only thing that I would like to add in is the conversation that, and, I, and we've heard it at the budget meetings, and I think that Dr. Jack mentioned that our elementary our elementary principals are coming together as a team and saying that they don't, that they don't feel like they have the support that they need to um, deal with some of the behaviors that they're dealing with in our school. And I just want to make sure that we keep that at the forefront of our conversation that when I met with Mr. Finn, um, you know, and he's talking about so, so many of the things that we fund like at the end of the year. And I think with the things that we're asking our schools to deal with, I think some of those conversations need to move to the front of the budget instead of being at the end of, well, we have these things left over and so we'll go ahead and pay and we'll go ahead and fund these things. And so I just would like to, I know Again, like these are things that we need to have conversations on, but I just want to make sure that it's presented on the table that um, that I, I've been in the schools, Stephanie's been in the schools, I know we've all been there, and we've seen what we're asking our administrators to deal with in the building, what we're asking them to handle as far as behaviors and special ed, and I just want to make sure that we're, um, that we're hearing what they're saying, that they understand that we're listening, that we're observing, and that, um, and that it's making a difference and where we can um, where we can make the difference is again advocating for that funding and making sure that that um, mr. Finn and, and our schools have what they need at the elementary level I think that's all I that's all I had very well said thank you is this where I smile now <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Jack, is there anything else that you wish to comment on or uh, charge the board here to do prior to our um, meeting? We, we, we do I, have that meeting uh, next Thursday at, at 4.30. Yeah, I mean, uh, so. there's been some excellent points made this evening, and, and thank you. Um, I think that communication piece, board member to board member, is so critically important. It's certainly made a difference over the years uh, in terms of these these types of uh, proceedings. and say as I, I told Duke prior to the meeting we're, we we are in a much better place and I, I don't want to I got a knock on wood because I don't want to spoil it but we're, we're in a much better place as far as meeting the school board budget budgets goals than we I think we ever have been and part of that is because of the influx of state money but I, but remember this um, it, it would be wonderful if the if the board of supervisors fully funded our our uh, our request that would be fantastic but I'll tell you something that we did not have to do this year that I think we've done every year since I've been in superintendent, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? But we've always made cuts within our existing budget right. to meet our goals. And I think this is probably the first, I, mean, I may be wrong, maybe off by a year, but we've done that every year. This is my seventh budget. We've done that every year since I've been superintendent, as I can recall. We've cut something out of our existing budget to meet our budget goals. And that's, that's caught up with us a little bit um, but as Duke has mentioned, uh, we have an opportunity now, and uh, with the positive relationships with the Board of Supervisors and the, the what's what's happening in Richmond makes a big difference. And this this is a, I, well, I feel like it's going to be a relatively positive budget year, especially after some really uh, difficult years in the past and recent past. Uh, this year feels a little different, and I think part of it has to do with really positive communication. So I thank you all for that. Could I add one more thing? Um, and this is something that we heard through the campaign season about the um, travel budget for the superintendent. And so, of course, when Stephanie and I met, we pulled out our, I don't know, 
our book, and we're questioning some of the things as far as where they were placed in the budget. And um, so one of the things that came up was the travel budget for the superintendent that was $22,597. And, and, um, and so, of course, we asked for clarification in that meeting. What is this and why is it under the superintendent's um, budget? And, and are you going to Jamaica for two weeks before school starts? Um, and so we received clarification that it was actually family engagement. And I, I wanted Dr. Jack to, to kind of talk a little bit about why he brought that um, in for for an opportunity for our, our building administrators and, and I also um, just want to make sure like so what I asked them to do so when you see the final budget come around that you don't think that we're that we're moving money without any clarification so I am publicly clarifying that um, we asked if that could be moved to a different area because unless Dr. Jack is getting in a plane and going somewhere, it's really not appropriate to be put under the superintendent's budget. But it is something that is that I believe in and it's something that I'll support. So that budget um, allotment is still there. It, it is being moved. I'm not totally sure where Prashant decided um, we needed to put that, but it's called family engagement. And it is not um, a $22,000 travel allowance for Dr. Jack. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's um, the, the family engagement, so the, the, the National Family Engagement Conference is held in, Rich, in Richmond. It's in Norfolk this year, but to, traditionally it's held in Richmond. So what, I, what we did was we invite principals and uh, other administrators, staff, who want to attend. It's an outstanding conference. We're committed to improving the relationships we have with our families, engaging with our families, because uh, the traditional ways of gauge, engaging with families really hasn't worked. Um, so. I made the decision a few years back, three or four years back, to that I would pay for the principals, other administrators who wanted to attend to go to this conference and, and stay. And so that's how it ended up in my budget. But it's not for me. It's for people who want to go to that conference. And I, I feel like I'm defending myself, but I'm really not. I'm just explaining how it ended up. Well, I think it's how important it to know what the program is and what it's buying our, our schools. Right. And that it's not just, hey, I'm going to go to Richmond for the <laughs> couple days. Right. Well, it's a family engagement summit. It's, it's very well attended. It's a national conference. So we're just fortunate that's in our backyard. So it's less expensive than, than sending people to a national conference. But Prashant, is there anything I missed there that you? So you might see them disappear from one line and appear to another line. And so, um, you know, thanks to you, I'm going to make some notes in, so that when folks see those lines coming on and off, they know what they're looking at. Again, just to be more transparent, um, it's not because we're moving things around um, sporadically. It's because we're trying to match the way our budget is set up so that we can report it the way the state wants to see it and the federal government. And if anyone has any questions about the budget, about um, you know things, we, we've got we've gotten um, emails, we've gotten emails for 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 clarification. So if you have any questions about uh, a certain um, a certain thing that we're doing with the numbers, just feel free to email us. And if we don't know, um, Prashant will, and you know we'll get that information to you. So I think the big thing is is moving forward into the budget and the the CIP and every that we're, we're just looking to engage in communication with our community, with our Board of Supervisors, with the administration. And, um, you know, we have some work to do to change the narrative that um, happened through the campaign season. And I think that, you know, every time I go into our schools, I feel like it's a positive place that I want to be. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect, but we're in this together. And I think that if we open the lines of communication, uh, then you know we're just gonna we're just gonna get in we're just gonna get better and we're gonna improve. So if you have any questions about the budget, feel free to e you know to email 
let and you know ask us a question we'll get it we'll get you the information that you need yeah I would hi highly encourage reading through it and asking those questions rather than assuming like family engagement is not actually your, your personal slush fund so ask the questions because Prashant, <coughs> the office has been amazing um, I went in and they didn't even blink at me when I took out the yellow stickies they sat down and patiently went through it line by line with me so I, I don't think I can't imagine that they would be any different with anybody else. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Action items. I'll move that school board move agenda items 6.4 and 7.1 to action items 8.3 and 8.4 for consideration for approval this evening. Second. There's a motion and a second that we move agenda item 6.4 and 7.1 to action items 8.3 and 8.4 for consideration tonight in a discussion. You no discussion, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. All right, updates to student services policies. Let me get to that one. I'll move that the school board approve the updates to the student service policies as proposed. Second. Been a motion and a second that we update, uh, move to update to uh, student services policies as discussed in the, in, in the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, the next item is the Sea Power Energy Savings that Mr. Uh, Edwards presented to us. That the school board authorized the school <coughs> division to sign the contract with Sea Power for the permanent load reduction savings program. Second. It's been a motion and second that the school board authorizes the school division to sign the contract with Sea Power for the permanent load reduction savings program. In a discussion. Hear no discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Motion carries unanimously. And, and I'll move that the school board approve the FY 2021 superintendent's proposed budget presented on February 10th, 2020 with a duly advertised public hearing on February 24th, 2020, in the total amount of $155,839,160 for the school operating fund. Second. It's been a motion and a second that the school board approves the FY uh, 2021 superintendent's proposed budget as presented on February the 10th, 2020, with consideration to the input that has been provided by the school board and with duly advertised public hearing on February the 24th, 2020, in the total amount of $155,839,160 for the school operating fund. Very good. Very good. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, great. We're in the citizens' time, and it looks like only one person has signed up to talk. Uh, Ms. Deborah Logan. Deborah Logan, <clears throat> are you here? No? Okay. Colin, what's Colin? Then. Move to adjourn. Stop. Well, wait a minute. Let me close. <laughs> Let me close citizen's time, Ms. Grove. I'm closing citizen time. Now I will entertain a motion for adjournment. Move to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Move to adjourn and second. Okay. Okay. Okay.